you are very salty. The human body is an electrochemical system that contains many salts, with sodium chloride being the major one. Sodium and potassium regulate the total amount of fluid in the body and play a major role in the nervous system and muscles. The movement of sodium, inside and outside of the cells, is critical for generating electrical signals. Salt makes up around 0.4% of the body's weight. A 75 kilograms person would therefore contain 300 grams of sodium chloride. 50% of the sodium travels around outside our cells, mainly in the blood plasma as sodium chloride. 10% is found inside cells and within cartilage. 40% plus of the sodium is held within our bones because it has a crucial role in maintaining a magnesium and calcium balance. We have around 5 liters of blood in circulation, and our kidneys process this every 30 minutes or 48 times per day. So our kidneys are happily processing 150 grams of salty plasma every 30 minutes, or 7 kilos of salt per day. Our bodies are designed to cope with large amounts of salt in our diet. Although, historically this was done with a diet much richer in potassium. If the blood is low in salt, then it is retained. If there is too much salt, then it's going to ultimately hit the porcelain. Humans and animals have a clever feedback system for salt. The desire for salt decreases as your levels rise. When salt is low, the cravings increase and salt becomes more and more delicious. They blamed salt, but the real killer was sugar. There has been a demonization of salt with it being blamed on high blood pressure and heart attacks. The medical establishment recommends a tiny amount in the diet and the push is to make everything low salt. The past 50 years have seen a war on salt, with the RDA for sodium set at just 2.3 grams, or around 5 grams of salt. The Japanese have an average salt intake of 11 grams per day, yet they are the world's number one in terms of longevity. Also, the Japanese levels of heart disease are incredibly low. Why can this be so? For decades now, the medical and food establishment has pushed the narrative that salt is the villain. Before the advent of refrigerators, salt was used to preserve a wide range of foods and average salt intake was huge. Heart disease, obesity and high blood pressure were relatively unheard of. Thanks to the demonization of salt, most people are not getting enough. Especially people who do lots of exercise or live in hot countries. If you are constantly tired, have headaches and have muscle problems, you are probably low on electrolytes. So top up your sodium, potassium and magnesium. Sweating. The government recommendation for salt seems to be reasonable for a couch potato. It's very important for active people to have a good salt intake. This also applies to people who live in hot climates or are regular sauna users. Sweat typically contains 3 grams of salt per liter. Runners sweat at a rate of 1 to 2 liters per hour. In a typical sauna session, you would lose over a liter of sweat. A person doing a manual labor job could lose 10 to 15 grams of salt via heavy sweating per shift. Don't forget the potassium. Potassium is mainly found inside the cells and works with sodium to control cell volume. Sodium is mainly found outside the cells. When sodium levels rise, the body retains more water or tries to excrete the sodium in urine. Consuming more water and more potassium will mean lower sodium levels and less water retention. Potassium deficiency may lead to water retention causing edema, swelling, and weight gain. The best way to get a higher ratio of potassium to sodium is to eat specific fruits and vegetables, plus the use of a low sodium salt. These typically have two-thirds potassium chloride and one-third sodium chloride. You get a healthy 2 to 1 ratio of potassium to sodium. In conclusion, salt isn't bad for you. People have become scared of salt. Low salt intake causes huge problems that far outweigh any issues with a high salt intake. 11 grams of salt a day seems to be optimal. If you sweat a lot, you will need more. Your body is designed to get rid of excess salt, but it's not designed to function on very low salt levels. Get the correct balance of potassium to sodium. A low sodium salt is a fantastic way to increase your sodium along with potassium. Never be afraid to salt your food. Take an electrolyte drink each morning to start the day. We recommend low salt, a Barocca and magnesium. Himalayan pink salt, which is mined in Pakistan, is a marketing myth. 
Low sodium salts are way better. Don't use standard shaker salt. This contains nasty anti-caking agents such as ferrocyanides and aluminosilicate. If you enjoyed this short video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more.